I just filmed a haul in the same exact sitting area, so let's pretend like I'm not filming two videos back to back. I did something, and that something was this. I can't remember what occasion this was. I think it might have been Black Friday, but it was 15% off the entire website. I went, yes ma'am. So today I have to show you a lot of books. <laughs> Honestly, I read a lot of these for Cramathon. I talked about these in a lot of vlogs. I also unboxed this on Snapchat, so a lot of you might have seen this already. I'm just gonna hop into it because we got a full box coming up, ladies and gents. And a quick thank you to Book Outlet for sponsoring this video. Although, let's be real, I adore Book Outlet, so I would have bought these anyway, even if they weren't sponsoring me. <laughs> There's a very diverse group of books that I got this time. Stuff that I probably wouldn't have normally reached for. Why am I talking about this? Let's go. Cat in the Hat by Dr. Seuss. <laughs> I'm trying to collect all the Dr. Seuss works, but these are $9 full price for something I can read in like two minutes. Although they're great and they're lovely and they're wonderful, I just can't justify spending that kind of money on them. So I decided to pick this one up from Book Outlet. I think it was like two or three dollars. I read this for Cramathon, I really enjoyed it, and I'm looking forward to collecting all of his books. This is the first one I have in my collection. I could probably eBay the rest of them, but I'm cheap like that. This next thing I see is Yes Please by Amy Poehler. I have have not watched Parks and Rec, which is pretty much what she's most known for after the mom on Mean Girls. I've heard this book is really feminist. Just in general, I've heard positive things about this and I do appreciate Amy Poehler. Also, this is Scratch and Dent, so this one was like $2 and the only thing I see is like nothing. This is perfect. Next, I got something I didn't think they would ever sell at Book Outlet and I am lit for it. I'm so happy. These are little garden sticky notes. So journaling supplies, Book Outlet is on it. These are so stinking cute. So it comes with these and it's just like little flags that have like pots on them and it's so cute. I don't think first thing to reach for sticky notes in my journal. So this is gonna take some getting used to how to incorporate these in here. But I think they're so precious. I love it. I just love anything with flowers or nature to go in my journal. So this is gonna be very heavily utilized, I can predict. The next book I got is The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Bird. Oh, Frances Hodgson Burnett. 100% of the reason why I got this is because Taha Damafi loves this book. She always talks about the books that she read as a kid that she still enjoys and this is one of them. I assume this book has to do with a girl who discovers a secret garden and it's set in England. It's a children's classic. I've never read this or heard anything about it other than it's cute and good and the little princess makes everyone cry. I don't know. I just loved this cover and it was pretty cheap on Book Outlet so I wanted to give it a try. And also after reading Bridge to Terabithia I realized I need to pick up so many more children's classics because they're good. Also a sort of classic is The Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum. This I bought, not because I'm super interested in reading Wizard of Oz, which I might one day, but this is one of the Penguin Threads classics and it is my favorite line of books anywhere. Gorgeous cover, am I right ladies? Gorgeous back cover. It's like stitching. Watch. Watch. On the inside is the back of the stitches. I just think it's ingenious and it's so great and so clever and I think it's like the prettiest design in the entire world. So there's probably like a 15% chance I'll ever decide I want to read The Wizard of Oz. But this book is so pretty I could not pass it up. The next book I have is Flick by Abigail Tartellin. This is an author who I adore. I read Golden Boy by her last year and it made it to my favorites list. It was such an interesting book. And I've looked up interviews with Abigail and things that she's done. And she's just so empowering towards women. She's such a great person. She speaks for so many marginalized people. I don't know what this one's about, but I know after Golden boy I will read anything she publishes because she is just a spectacular human being, spectacular author. The back of this book describes it as a modern day Romeo and Juliet about sex, love, and growing up. Could be angsty. I'm looking forward to it. Speaking of feminism, I got Spinster by Kate Bollock. I've seen this book floating around and honestly this is not my favorite cover of it but it was the cheapest one. And this book is captioned Making a Life of One's Own and this book just talks about the growing trend of not getting married. I think it pulls from very feminist vibes about monot monogamy? Mon mon monogamy? I tried to make a big word there but it didn't work. You know what I mean. I just really hope that this is going to be very interesting and I'm trying to read more non-fiction and this sounds like something extremely eye-opening and also cool. I've just had my eye on this for a while and it was cheap on Book Outlet and I'm really excited to try this one out. This one's sad but let's talk about it. I got a book called It's Not You, 27 Wrong Reasons You're Single. If you know anything about me, I'm a 19 year old egg who has never had a boyfriend 
done. I just have seen this around and I thought it was hilarious, but as soon as I saw it on Book Outlet, like something in me cracked and I went, I need that. So hopefully this is gonna be funny, but also kind of like help me on the inside deal with my sadnesses about being so single. All right, all right, all right. So I got three poetry books from the same author. I'd never heard of this person before, but I saw this one book and I went, that looks so cool. And the original book that I saw is called Said the Shotgun to the Head. This is by Saul Williams. I looked this up on Amazon because poetry is really hit or miss for me. You gotta understand that. So I looked it up and I started looking at the beginning of the book and I just remember being like, that is so cool. Like the way it's written, it, there's just different fonts and it's really neato. And I picked this one up, but then I saw he had two other books on there that I thought I would interest myself with. The second one being She and the third one being USA. I ended up reading these two for Cramathon. I'm gonna give you my thoughts for a second because very important. This is one of my new favorite books of all time. This is one long poem, whereas these two more feature separate poems, but this is one big narrative about anti-war messages and anti-racism messages, feminism and unity. And it's just one of the most beautiful and most cleverly written and poetic masterpieces I have ever read. I am so unapologetic that I literally went through this with a pen and I was marking up everything I loved about it. I think my favorite page out of the entire book is this. It's just so powerful and I adore it and it's written by a black man and I support him so much. Then I went on to read She. This one's more love poems. This one's also beautiful. Not as good as that one, but still a gorgeous read. I gave it five stars. This one is called USA because it is a commentary on the United States of America. And I don't, I don't think I'm ready for that one yet. This is gonna be a real big slam dunk. This one also just seems a lot more dense than the other two, whereas the other two are very skippy around poems. This one is like, I'm gonna probably get a headache <laughs> reading this. I cannot wait to read this one. Saul Williams is just one of my new favorite poets. I highly recommend these. This next book I got was an impulse buy. I don't think I've ever heard anyone talk about this. It was Hidden by Helen Frost. I also read this for Gramathon. This book is written in verse, so it's like pretty much like poetry. This follows two characters in dual perspective. The first one is a girl who as a child she was accidentally kidnapped and the second perspective is the daughter of the kidnapper and it talks about how their lives intertwine. I'll talk about this in a wrap up probably sometime soon, but it was like a three star book. Next I got two graphic novels. The first one is Genius and this is by Siegel and Christensen. This book I thought was gonna feature a black main character cause that cover, but I was misled and I was so sad. This ended up being a really big flop for me. I read it for Cramathon. The art was really pretty and I thought it was a cool concept. It was about the scientist guy who had to find a new theory otherwise be fired from his job. So it was just, you know what, that doesn't sound interesting. It wasn't that interesting. It just was boring. There was nothing to it other than just like, I'm gonna lose my job, oh man, sad. But the other one I got is The Gigantic Beard That Was Evil, which just that title alone in the cover I was in. This is supposed to be just this allegory about xenophobia and differences in society. So this is kind of set in a utopia where no one has a beard until this man starts growing one. I think I need to reread this with a fresh mind because when I read this, I thought it was gonna be this huge humorous read that was gonna be so funny and light and it ended up being this very dark book that had its humorous moments but for the most part had a wider message than I was expecting but I really super enjoyed this. The art was really pretty and just great. It's all black and white but still just the details that went into it and I thought it was so lovely. I think it gave this book like four stars but it should be five stars. It was pretty good. I recommend it. I got another poetry book that one of my friends has recommended me before. It is for colored girls who have considered suicide when the rainbow is enough. This has won just so many awards. It says there's a motion major picture. Major motion picture. Wow. I'm just really into reading new perspectives and I think this is definitely gonna offer that. So I'm excited to jump into this one against Poetry Show. Trying to get more into that as well. <laughs> what kind of feminist would I be if I didn't read anything by Gloria Steinem? I know this book literally looks like it was published in 1984, but Gloria Steinem is like a massive feminist who like led the movement in the 60s. I probably should be researching some women of color too to read books from about feminism, but I love Gloria Steinem. I feel like I 
deserve to give at least one of her books a read and this one was on book outlet so I decided I would try it out and this one's called Outrageous Acts and Everyday Rebellions and I believe this is a collection of essays which it's massive so <laughs> she had lots to say I believe this next book I have I've heard is basically just Harry Styles porn when I want to read some smutty new adult whatever this should fit the bill it's called After by Anna Todd I can't guarantee this is non-problematic and realistic in any way it's probably gonna be entertaining and that's the entire reason why I bought it I think it was like a dollar I'm an English major I'm a sophomore in college why am I reading that this next book I've never heard of but I thought sounded really intriguing it is The Art of Sleeping Alone by Sophie Fontelet that's French. Fontenelle. This is captioned why one French woman suddenly gave up sex. So it's a memoir about this woman who suddenly decided that she was gonna go without that. And I think it's such an interesting concept. I want to know what went behind this and the effects that it had. So I think this is just gonna be an informative book filled with lots of thought. And also the cover is super aesthetic with the drawing and the mint green. I like this concept. I love this woman already and I'm here for it. The next book I have is called Symptoms of Being Human by Jeff Garvin. This book is about a gender fluid main character. It's not own voices so I don't know if this book has any issues. I probably should have researched that once again but I think by the time I placed this order I was just really ready to have some diverse books in my hands. I've never read a book about gender fluidity. I'm starting to look more into books that feature these types of main characters that don't fit the gender binary or transgender. I'm not huge into YA contemporary anymore but if this is gonna offer me something that I've never read before then I'm in. This next book I have is called Wondering Who You Are by Sonia Leah. This is a memoir about a girl who her husband goes in for an operation on something really minor ends up coming out with memory loss so they're having to deal with the relationship with that lost memory which still means it's sad like it's a horrible thing to happen to a family but I just feel like this happens a lot because there's so many movies and books about it already but I looked up the reviews for this on Goodreads and it was mostly positive and I wasn't really interested in reading what was that one book that came out about this like the the vow that one didn't really resonate with me I decided I'd give it a go the next book I have speaking of feminism is called everyday sexism by Laura Bates this just is a collection of everyday sexism that happens to women and I think this was pulled from a blog I think that she just asked people to give her some examples of everyday sexism in this entire book was a result of that so I think these are just stories and quotes quotes inside and I'm just ready to read about it and learn about what I have to fear out in the real world. I have one last book to show you and I'm gonna show you this empty box to prove it. I'm sorry we've been here for so long. I know you're tired of hearing me speak. <laughs> this last book I have is called Manthropology and I bought this purely just for fun. This is actually hilarious. I have to read the back of this to you because it just cracked me up. So it says, anthropologist Peter McAllister, that's the author, set out to prove once and for all that man today is the best man who has ever lived, but to his disappointment and nearly every category he examined, modern man was beaten by his ancestors. So this is a book that talks about how the current generation of humanity sucks in comparison to the last generation. So I think that's just funny. Like I'm here for a book about men who suck. So it's a look at male achievement and underachievement. It kicks off in Ice Age France where McAllister proves how Neanderthal women could beat even today's strongest strong man at arm wrestling. Yeah, so you get, you get it, but I'm just, that sounded so interesting to me. This might just be like a coffee table read that I pick up every now and then, but that just was so hilarious to me and I had to read this. I'm gonna have to look up reviews and see if this is at all. And now that I have a massive stack of books on my bed that I just hauled, once again a huge shout out to Book Outlet for sponsoring this video and letting me acquire all these books. I'm so excited to read them and the ones that I've already read were pretty good. I hope you all are having a wonderful life. I will link down below the page that shows all the books I've purchased on Book Outlet and if they're still there. I smell dinner which means it's probably past dinner time and everyone's eating without me so I'm gonna go do that. You're all beautiful. Thank you for watching and goodbye!